Hello and welcome to the Gym RPG Show. This video is a roundup of the RTX 3080 AIB cards, so you can see a variety of cards on the market. It's not long to go until the big channels drop their reviews, which I believe will be September 17th, and we'll be able to see which of these cards perform the best. At the end of the video, I'll do my own personal top three cards, but it'll be based on the marketing material and the prices we have right now. This is a price list from about a week ago on Overclockers UK. And these are the cards we'll be looking at today. These are British pounds, but the best way to get a US price is to add $50 onto the MSRP of every card. Now, since Video Cards has published the article, prices for some of these cards have gone up, and that tells me there's just not going to be enough cards at launch, and you're going to overpay a bit. This is a comparison on the size of the cards. I was surprised that the Founders Edition was one of the smaller cards, and we'll have to wait and see if this affects the cooling. The Azu Strix, Gigabyte Aorus Master and Extreme, and MSI Gaming X Trio have the largest sized cards. This probably means they have the biggest heat sinks and fans. The interesting thing is the AIB RTX 3080 cards are the same size as the RTX 3090 cards, meaning they probably have the same cooler. In the previous RTX 3090 video, someone asked what power connectors would be used on each AIB card. The Founders Edition uses two 8-pin to a single 12-pin adapter, which is included in the box. The higher priced cards like the Azu Strix, MSI Gaming X Trio have three 8-pins, most likely for overclocking purposes. The other base MSRP price cards have two 8-pins. The first card here is the Azus Strix and the Strix OC. Azus is one of the more reputable brands on the market. If you watched my previous video on the binning of the GPUs, I'd expect with the 180 premium over the base MSRP, you'd get a higher bin chip, though I have no way of knowing if this is actually the case. General build quality of past Azus Strix has been really good as well. I generally wouldn't pay the extra $20 to $30 to get the factory OC version, as you can do it easily with software. One interesting thing to note is the Strix has a 19.5 gigabits per second memory clock, which is 0.5 gigabits per second faster than other cards. Azus also has a tough gaming line, and this looks like it's close to the MSRP, meaning it'll probably just run at the standard stock performance. The two 8-pin power connector limits the power delivery and overclocking potential. The card design falls a bit flat and looks pretty uninspired. That said, if you want a name brand and want to pay close to MSRP, this would be a decent choice. EVGA's range include the Kingpin, which is their ultimate overclocking card, a Hydro Copper specifically for water cooling, a Hybrid, which is an all-in-one solution, for the Win 3, which is their better air cooling card, and the IXE 3, which is their base level card. The IXE 3 is around the MSRP and looks to be a pretty solid card that seems better designed than the Azus Tough. KFA 2 SG has some pretty interesting features that I did not mention in my last video. You can add a fourth fan on the bottom of the card, and this helps exhaust hot air out. It has some pretty terrible box art, but that shouldn't affect the performance of the card too much. Pallet Gaming has a pretty nice looking card with a Gaming Pro and was priced at the base MSRP level before it got a price hike recently. At this price, I don't think it's worth it and I'd probably get one of the other cards. The Gaming Pro is one of the smaller 3080 cards and again I wouldn't worry too much about the overclock edition and just overclock it yourself. One thing I didn't cover in the 3090 video was the Zotac lineup. Their base level card is the Trinity card. The Trinity Hollow looks to be the Trinity card plus RGB lights. There's an Amp Extreme which will be their top air cooled card that looks to be competing with the Azus Strix and MSI Gaming X Trio. There's no information right now for any of the cards except for the Trinity card, but check back for the Zotac Amp Extreme as that's been a popular card in the past. Inno 3D have the same lineup for the RTX 3090 as the RTX 3080. The X4 has a fourth fan on the side of the card that probably doesn't add too much to the performance in my opinion. The X3 is your standard three fan card and I probably wouldn't go with the X2 which is a two fan solution for a high end card. I've heard from users that Inno 3D cards ran hotter than other cards so I definitely wait for some reviews on these. Gigabyte have a range of cards with prices already. The Aorus Master and Aorus Extreme appear to be their top cards. 
The master in Extreme, like the Azu Strix, has a central fan that works in the opposite direction to reduce the turbulence, which is a nice feature. It looks as though the Aorus Master and Aorus Extreme uses the same cooler, and that it could be one of the thickest cards on the market at 3.5 slots to 4 slots in height. Also, if you're considering these, get the Aorus Extreme as that has a 3 8 pin power connector, and the Aorus Master has a 2 8 pin power connector, and you'll be able to overclock the card further. The other two cards Gigabyte have announced are their base level cards, the Gigabyte Eagle, which is their entry level card, and this has the most basic level cooler. The Gigabyte Gaming OC is about £50 more, and comes with what looks to be a better looking cooler. Finally, we have the MSI cards. The MSI Ventus 3X is MSI's card that is closest to the base MSRP. It looks like a really solid card, and if you do a search on YouTube, there's a two hour stream from MSI that talk about the Ventus 3X and also the Gaming X Trio. There's no RGB features, but overall it looks nicely built. The MSI Gaming X Trio is about £70 more and would be in a higher tier than the MSI Ventus 3X. It has three 8 pin power connectors and is one of the bigger cards in the market. It's about £80 cheaper than the Strix. Alright, so let's do a quick top three based on all the cards here. So, number three, EVGA IXC3. This looks like it has solid build quality and is a good brand name card. Number 2, MSI Ventus 3X. Again, this looks like a top quality card, and if you look at the Azus Tough versus the MSI Ventus 3X, the Ventus has the better looks and what appears to be better build quality. And number 1, MSI Gaming X Trio. So if you can potentially get 10% overclocking, maybe around 1900 MHz on these cards on air, then this would be worth it to step up to a premium AIB card. The RTX 3090 is about 20-25% to better than the 3080, so getting an extra 10% performance for an extra 15% cost, which is about $100 more, would be a decent deal. You could also get the Aorus Extreme, Zotac Amp Extreme, or the Azu Strix, but the MSI Gaming X Trio seems to be the card with the cheapest 3 8-pin power connector. Alright, that's it for this one. Let me know what you think of the cards in the comments below. And as always, like the video and subscribe for more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next one.